jam for the clubs, for the rays, so b-boys and b-girls engage. I wanna see Supernatural get live. Tear up the place, mash up the circle inside. Let them all know, let them all see, let them understand. Make them stop, make them freeze. Let's break, you hear what I'm talking about. Let's break, there ain't no alternative route. Supernatural, ready to step inside the place to show off. The network represent the whole lot. Hop. Unity will always be the remedy. Boom, bap. Always on track, vigorous energy. Whoever thought a dance would ever be the switch kick, yo. Maybe I'll keep you enter in the Olympics. Whoever thought a dance would ever be the switch kick, yo. Maybe I'll keep you enter in the Olympics. I'm Dizzy, a 12 time 13 world, time world champion, champion, a pioneer, a global b-boy activist, and you're watching the Dizzy Diaries b-boy vlog! And yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of the Dizzy Diaries b-boy vlog. Today, I'm on my way over to the Cafe Benet because I need to use their Wi-Fi. I don't have Wi-Fi hooked up to my place yet, but I thought I'd make a quick vlog about Youth Olympics. Yes, it is 2018, approximately 26 years later since when I began breaking, and whether or not the community has supported breaking going to the Olympics, it still made its way there anyways, which is freaking amazing. Now, well, I wasn't involved this year, which is okay because as long as it gets there, as long as it keeps moving forward and actually enters the actual Olympics, hopefully by 2024, the amount of rewards that will be reaped is incredible. Now, it looked really good, so I didn't get to see the battles, but I saw a few clips and all the stuff that was online, and yeah, it looked like it was a success. It looked like, it looks like something that we've never seen before. My business venture, the plan, has already reaped the rewards. Because just a few days ago, we went to go meet up with the Ministry of Culture and Tourism and Sports in Jai City. And just by mentioning that Breaking went to the Youth Olympics this year and showing a couple of pictures, now they're on board and they want to support us 100%. So think about that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, the way that people are looking at us is at a way higher level now. Just the fact that it was included in the Youth Olympics. Think about it. it we're such an impressed type of culture you know rapping and everything else went to the highest level but breaking it's still not as accepted worldwide we just broke through that huge barrier and there'll be a tipping point where we're still gonna start making a living so that's the good part of it now I've said all the good things about it but of course there are gonna be bad things about it too and I'll get that I'll get to that later on uh, some people have been messaging me telling me the negative aspects uh, about it and but these are things that can be fixed in the beginning of the video what you saw was a video that my crew back in 2000 were already promoting breaking going to the Olympics back then uh, there's a guy from my crew Supernaturals he's also the Zulu Nation chapter leader of all of the north in northern North America which is of course Canada and uh, yeah and even he was promoting it since back then of course we, we worry about the corruption and gentrification of our culture but at the same time we know that if we want to have a stake in the world we need to be at the same level in the system and that's the reality of the fact we can complain about the system but as long as we're poor we're still at the lowest point but if we're at the highest would we even complain anyway if you want to see the video of the track please go to the description below and click on the link and you can see the video from back in the days this video was uh, aired all over Much Music and on Can on Can Web TV, so it was really out there. It wasn't just kind of like you know on a few breaking events or nothing. No, it was like it was out there back in the days, and it's kind of like it's kind of like a prophecy, you know. Like maybe one day breaking will will make it to the Olympics, and look, it did. That's amazing. The guy in my crew, his name is Trix, but he also represents the Style Lords Hip Hop Network, which he leads, and yes, of course, the Zulu Nation chapter leader of the North. I just want to say, if you look at all the, think about all the b-boys out there, imagine one day you can have a student, you know, that makes it and wins a gold medal, you know what I mean, like, that's going to be amazing. Like, think about how much pride a country will have, like, for example, Bumblebee. Bumblebee, he actually hit me up uh, prior and he said that the Russia government was going to fund him to be coached by anyone in the world and he wanted to choose me. And, uh, you know... That was amazing. He said it could be anyone in the world and they would fly them in and, and to coach him to win. He wanted to choose me. Now things fell through for, for certain reasons, but still, it's, it's okay because he won it anyways. 
right? And just to think that he was just with us at freestyle session, entering with us, you know what I mean? And uh, now he just goes on to become the champion. So, I'm almost at Cafe Benet, and I was gonna talk about something over there. Now the cool thing about these videos is that it was, it was streamed live. I'm like, it was on ESPN and all these major sports. It's freaking awesome. Oh, here we are. Cafe Benet. Hey, what's up? It turns out that Cafe Benet did not work out for me, so I'm here at my office, which is not yet exactly put together. But uh, we're getting over there. This is gonna be the official Our City B-Boys office right now, and uh, yeah. I apologize guys for the big echo because we're in the office and it sounds like this, but pretty soon I'm gonna move into another room with less echo. I finally got to the computer and I've been watching the YOG battle and first off, let me say it's amazing. We've never seen stuff like that before. The whole setup, very Olympic, very sporty. I know a lot of people might not really like that. But to be honest, but to be honest, I, I can dig it. You know, I think it's all right. You know? you know, we still have a good blend of the culture in there. We have our host. They're, they're calling it b-boying. They're calling it b-boys and b-girls. So we're getting the terminology more right. I mean, people from our scene are actually involved, so there's a, legit, a legitimacy to it. The only thing that I can say something about is number one, the trivium system. It's not the same as how it was at the Japan final. But it's actually a lot, a lot more clear to understand right now than how it was before with the whole, the whole plus minus two point something, whatever. So it's much better now. Um, it doesn't give you a reason why somebody won or lost other than, you know, their judges are looking at this, but still seems very opinionated. Um, you don't know what the B-Boys won on or what they didn't. All you know is they won votes. Hey, if the Olympics are cool with it, and if this is gonna be brought into the 2024 Olympics, then yeah! Now, the second thing that I wanna talk about is the whole commentary thing. We have a woman with a British accent that is commentating, and at one hand, I don't think it sounds really that bad. She is very clear and concise, and she knows how to speak and commentate. Maybe she's a professional commentator, because she can speak very well. However, there are a lot of things in b-boying that she completely missed and it would have been great if she had somebody with her to explain to her certain things that, you know, didn't make sense. So I'm gonna watch a little bit of the clips and just kind of like commentate on her commentating because what, is she's, what she was talking about is gonna mislead the audience into thinking something that it's actually not. And uh, yeah, let's give it a shot, but first let's move into another room. Okay, so I'll grab my laptop. That way you don't get so much echo. There's a little, oh, don't forget guys, GI Dreamers vs. New York City is coming up pretty soon. Uh, January 5th, this is gonna be an intense battle. So it's the first full exhibition battle that's actually judged, that's gonna be in front of thousands of people, which is gonna prove that the general audience wants to see these exhibition judge battles and this is a way that viewers can make a living. So January 5th, if you can make it, come out. You know, you can get tickets, I'll, we can reserve you some tickets. Um, and yeah, you get to see the blockhouse. The blockhouse should be open by then. So you get to witness the whole deal. And then you can see how we can bring the plan to your city or your country. Yeah, so anyways, let's go. So I've got my little laptop over here. Getting out of the little cute unfinished office that I'm using, which is also a practice room. What's up, this is the home bees right here. Working hard, what you guys working on? Yeah, we are working hard. Yeah, very, very hard. <laughs> these, are the, these are all the seats that are going to be sold. Bam, look at that. Woo. And those are the tickets right there. Yeah, yeah. good job guys, keep going. <laughs> and we're gonna go into another room where it's more quiet and there's less noise. Okay, let's watch the battles here. 